All right, guys. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about four bar linkage designs, okay? Um, because this past year with the with the hubs, um, they were a critical part having a good lift on your robot. Um, and in this year with the um, what's this year's called? I can't remember. Squared no squared away. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, four bar linkage was a critical part of the design last year. It's probably going to be a critical part this year, and you're probably going to be making four bar linkages in robotics just about every year that you compete. Okay. Um, this is the classic four bar linkage right here. It's a parallelogram, right? So this side is straight up, this is straight up, these are straight across. And if you move it up or down, all the sides remain perfectly parallel, okay? And it remains that way because the distance between this pivot, if you can see right here, I've got an axle poking through the board. Between this pivot and this pivot is the same. And we've got a blue peg I know blue on blue sort of blends in. There's a blue peg here and a blue peg here. These distances from here to here and here to here are identical, and from here to here and here to here are identical. So, classic four bar linkage design. Now, we're going to talk about mistakes that you might make with your four bar linkage and why you might want to make those mistakes. And if you want to make a mistake on purpose, then it's not a mistake, okay? Let's say you didn't get your spacing correct here on the back, okay? And you can clearly see it's wider here than it is here. What does this do to your four bar design? Let's assume the robot is here and this is the front of your arm, okay? Just like here. Here's the back of the robot, here's the front of the arm right here. Well, let's watch what happens to this front piece right here. As you go up, it tilts downward. And as you go down, it tilts upward. Okay? And that's if it's wider at the base than it is at the claw end. Now let's take the opposite. It's more close together on the robot end and wider out here. Right now, they're parallel or roughly parallel. As we move up, it tilts upward. When we move downward, it tilts down. Okay. Um, our team actually used that this year in the design on purpose, and we're gonna show you why uh, that worked to our advantage. If you take this year's robot from this past year, all right, we're going to get you a good bird's eye view down here so you can see the claw. You see how the claw's tilted downward right here? That helped our, our drivers pick up the hub because the claw was tilted downward. Now when you pick up, as the arm moved upward, the claw tilted upward, which helped the robot get extra height so it could get the yellow hub off the high uh, position uh, up top. Okay, so it, it was a way to get some extra up and down travel without having to make the robot any taller or the arm any longer. Simply by making one change on the four bar design. Just like the robot here, you move up, the claw tipped upward, you move down, the claw tipped downward. Um, those are some tricks you can use in your four bar design and, and, and that's what happens, okay? Uh, let's bring this arm back down, please. And concerning four bar design and just design overall, most everybody had hooks like this on the uh, bottom part of the four bar, and that was used for hanging for the high hang, okay? So that meant, yes, this bottom piece had to be strong. It had, it had to be able to support the weight of the robot, 
during the high hang. It had to be able to be firmly attached to the gears. Okay, so you needed a good strong piece for this bottom, but you didn't have to have it for the top because the top, the only weight that the top bar is supporting is the actual claw itself. It's just strong enough to support and keep this claw from tipping downward, okay? Um, I saw a lot of teams that had very, very big and heavy top bars for their four bar here, and, and where this team has got one piece for the top. Uh, several teams had two very large pieces. Some of them had braces holding those pieces together, and that actually wasn't wasn't needed because there's just not, not that much weight that that top bar is supposed to support. Um, and usually the lighter you make your robot, the faster your robot will be, the easier it will handle, the longer your battery will last, and the better you will perform in competition. Um, anyway, uh, that's the uh, lesson on four bar design, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it and got something from it. Thanks.